Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to this video series where we're going to be discussing economic applications of continuous time dynamic programming. In this video, we're going to work through a continuous time version of the cake eating problem. Let's go. So the setup of this problem is as follows. Suppose we have a consumer deciding how to consume a fixed resource over an infinite continuous time horizon with instantaneous preferences defined as follows. That is u of ct is equal to ln ct. Uh, mathematically speaking, this is where our individual is maximizing uh, the infinite horizon of his discounted utilities where her time is continuous, right? Meaning he's picking a individual CT at each point in time, subject to a initial cake size and this law of motion characterized by just the amount of cake you consume at time T. The corresponding hamilton jacobi bellman equation is which is you know, just the Bellman equation for a continuous time model um, is as follows. That is R of VKT, right? Is equal to our instantaneous uh, preferences plus the derivative of this value function times the law of motion. The task that we're gonna do here is that we're gonna solve for our policy function in regards to consumption. So the way we do this is by following seven steps. So step number one is that we're gonna write out the Hamilton-Jacobi-Bellman equation. This is just the analog of the Bellman equation in continuous time. Uh, step number two is that we take our first order conditions and we solve for C tilde T. This is an intermediate state up. Next is that we're gonna take this intermediate step and we're gonna plug it in to the initial Bellman equation in step, from step one. And for step number four, we're gonna go and then take a guess of what our value function is. We're then gonna sub this guess into step three and solve for our coefficients. After we solve for our coefficients, we then take those coefficients and plug them into our guess for V of KT. Step number seven is that we're gonna use our solution for V of KT to solve for our policy function C star of T. So following our steps here is that we're gonna write out our hamilton jacobi bellman equation in continuous time, right? That is uh, you know, just what we have here. We plug in our instantaneous utility function and our law of motion, which just changes uh, the sign of our variable here. So moving to step number two is that we're going to solve for this intermediate policy function here, C tilde, right? And if we take the derivative of that with respect to C, right, we go and we get the following result. With a little bit of algebra, we go and we get the following. That is our policy function is defined by the inverse of the derivative of our value function here. Step number three is that we're going to sub this result into our initial Bellman equation. So we're going to go back to our Bellman equation with everything plugged in. And we're gonna plug in this inverse of our derivative of VKT wherever we see it, and we get a simpler result. Next, we're gonna go and back up and we're gonna take a guess for what VKT is. And we're gonna take the guess the smart way because that's gonna be based on what our preferences are. It's just a constant plus uh, CT times the structure of our preferences with regards to KT. Um, step number five is that we're gonna take a guess for this result, and we're gonna sub that into our result for step number three. That is what we have right there. And we're gonna get the following result down here. We're gonna solve for our coefficients here. The way we do this is by going and playing something interesting. We want to go and make this as simple as possible. So the way we make our algebra simple is just by letting C2 be one value, right? We're allowed to do this because these are undetermined coefficients, they could be anything that we want. And we're taking the liberty to go and just pick it as one over R. With that in mind, we're now able to go and solve for C1 here. Next, we're gonna go and sub the solution of our coefficients into our guess for our VKT. So what we have is our you know value function here, and we got our values for our coefficients C1 and C2 here, and we're gonna plug them in here. We now have a definition of our value function. And from there, we can move to step, step number seven and we can use that solution to solve for our optimal policy function. So remember, we said our policy function is defined by CT is equal to the inverse of VKT here, right? That's what we go and we have. Now, if we were to go and take the derivative of that here, right? That'd be just you know one over RKT. And the inverse of that just flips it Right, so it's just R K T. So that's what we go and we have here. So this is how you solve a continuous time cake eating problem uh, just 
using your Hamilton-Jacobi-Bellman equations when you have that there. I hope this video helps. Take care.